when your recording's ready to go. Perfect. All right, we're all set. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and, and welcome to our community-based planning meeting. Uh, this is uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. I do want to thank you for giving uh, part of your Saturday morning to uh, join us and to listen to a variety of ideas that we have in mind for the purposes of a grant application we're submitting to the state, uh, that application being due in December. And part of the component of that app is that we certainly solicit community feedback on these concepts. Um, we want to encourage you to participate, meaning um, you can support the ideas or not. And if you like the ideas, great. If you have other uh, recreational features that perhaps we ought to consider as part of that application, uh, please do not hesitate to share that with us. And then also, um, if you don't like it at all, please do not hesitate to share that information as well. Um, we want to know that uh, your ideas, uh, why they are important to you, and how, if you can tell us um, what's meaningful about uh, your concern or uh, perhaps your, your need, uh, we would like to hear that as well. Uh, we need to be able to convey that as part of the application. So thank you again very much for your participation. We're going to go ahead and start with our first slide this morning. Uh, really briefly, we want to talk about the agenda. And um, so you get some familiarity on the grant background, as well as um, get some um, you know, familiarity with our planning process. So Frank, can you move us to the next screen, please? Yes, just give me one second. I'm having a little difficulty. It's oh, no. No problem. I'll go ahead and go ahead and, and start talking so that um, when we get into it, uh, the important part will be, of course, the projects, the images related to the projects. So uh, on the agenda today, what we will spend some time briefly talking about is the statewide park development and community revitalization program. Sorry, I had to look at my notes because it's too long of a grant program. But basically, this source of funding comes to us from the state of California. It is uh, specifically funded under Prop 68, previously funded under Prop 84. We believe this will be the last round of funding. So it's very likely that um, the competitive process will be substantial uh, come December. And, uh, but in any event, we believe all of our projects have sizable merit and we're excited to move forward with the possibility of those projects. And of course, we wanna see those projects evolve based on your input. So um, uh, our goal is to address high priority needs and hopefully you get some semblance of that as we talk about those projects today. We have a total of seven projects that are being submitted for consideration. Initially, uh, I think we had about four, and then those did e evolve to seven as we got into the initial meeting with the council to get their approval to move forward with a, an application. So let's move over to slide number four. Um, before we get started on the uh, projects, uh, I probably should introduce myself. My name is Lucy Garcia. I'm the Assistant City Manager for the City of Alhambra. We're working collaboratively with the Parks and Recreation Department with the intent, of course, to formalize the applications and gather input and all of that wonderful stuff to, um, to uh, be able to submit a quality application. So that's me. I'm going to pitch it over to Mike so he can introduce himself and his staff. Thank you, Lucy. Um, my name is Mike Macias, and I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation. And I oversee all the parks, um, the golf course, um, El Manzer Court, and all the various divisions within the department. At this time, I'd like to introduce Bree. Bree, take it away. Hi, my name is Bree Houghton. I'm Deputy Director for Parks and Recreation. I oversee aquatics, senior center services, uh, community programs, and all citywide special events. So I am 
care to speak on behalf of some of the aquatic project projects that are going to be talked about later today and also answer any questions um, that I can. I will, I believe we only have Frank left to introduce himself. Yes, uh, good morning. My name is Frank Reyes. I'm the program coordinator here at the city of Alhambra. I am in charge of youth sports and I also assist with some of the special events here. And I do believe we have Van as well. Van, go ahead. Good morning, I'm Van, I handle marketing and communications for the city. Um, I'm gonna pitch it back to Lucy to continue the meeting. Thank you all so very much. So as you can see the um, audience, we certainly have gathered a team of uh, internal uh, experts, if you will, uh, on, the, on these particular park areas. Uh, Mike and his team, of course, uh, navigate these programs on a routine basis and these um, locations and facilities for the community. And so to the extent that we can uh, share with you why these improvements are important, um, they will convey to you uh, the history in some cases with regards to some of these facilities and, and a little bit more background, of course, answer your questions should you have them. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the webinar format today. So you are being muted at this time, but it's only briefly as we get through some of the uh, project concept descriptions. And then after each uh, project, we will give you an opportunity to uh, certainly address any questions and share any ideas. As I mentioned earlier, we do want to hear from you specifically on the improvements. Um, you can choose to like them or not. More importantly, you can choose to say, hey, we'd like to see some safety features, additional safety features, or perhaps we'd like to see some art features, some environmental features, all of which are winning opportunities as far as the grant is concerned. And um, certainly, um, if you have any ideas about the placement of certain features within each park area, those are comments that the state would like to, to hear from you as well. So again, at the end of each project section, we will pause for a minute and we will ask you to uh, either press the chat feature, which is located at the bottom of your screen and ask Frank to please let you in um, for an opportunity to, to ask a question or make a comment. He will call on you by name. If you prefer, you can also raise your hand by pressing the participants uh, button also at the bottom of your screen. And once you press that, the, the small screen will open and you will see raise hand feature button at the bottom of that other screen. So I hope that's clear. Uh, I've talked a little bit about the grant, uh, but I should probably also mention that concurrent with these meetings, we are also conducting an electronic survey. Um, that survey is being pushed out through our social media platforms. Um, it also has been communicated to various civic groups, the school district, and we have hit the target areas with the intent to get specific feedback from those residents that live near these uh, project locations. Very important that we hear from, from these folks in particular, uh, since we anticipate that they would, um, uh, uh, they would benefit uh, from, from the proposed enhancements. So, uh, and then we offer for you uh, our contact information. You're more than welcome to contact me. And of course, Mike, Mike can be reached at, um, at the city of Alhambra as well, and uh, would be happy to further address any questions or, or maybe other ideas that popped into mind after this particular meeting. Um, next slide, please. So real quick uh, on the SPP grant, I did mention it was funded under Prop 68. I also mentioned it was funded, it will be available the application period through December 14th. And then uh, it didn't, it, I didn't mention that we do, there is a, a, a minimum maximum grant value that grant value, as you can see on the screen is between 200,000 and eight and a half million dollars. We are not necessarily seeking eight and a half million dollars for each and every one of our projects. Uh, we do believe uh, at least a couple of them will be substantial in funding. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we have a myriad of needs for each of the locations, so definitely the budget for each of those projects are expected to vary and perhaps vary significantly. Um, 
and they are individual applications. So I wanna make it clear that um, for each project location, we are submitting an independent application. And that really is to, to be able to further embellish on the merits of that particular project location. And of course, it's consistent with the requirements of, of the grant funding source. Um, we do have some images you will see once we get into the projects. And it's important for you to understand that those images um, are really just for the purposes of triggering ideas and uh, triggering our discussion. So um, I don't want you to assume that we're fixated on uh, these images based on what we'll be showing you. Uh, that is the renderings. And we only have renderings for maybe a couple of the projects anyway, but they're really just meant to create a visual of the opportunity that might be there for us. Uh, as far as the eligibility criteria for the park uh, grant application is concerned, we are expected to meet one of two critical criteria. The first one being that each of the project locations satisfy that, that um, that lo location area uh, has less than three acres per parkland per 1,000 residents. And it's a formula-based, data-based uh, calculation that's available to us through a fact finder tool that the state has made available. We've identified all of our project location, the seven, and uh, I can tell you that all seven satisfy this criteria. So we know that all of our projects are eligible based on that. The other way to uh, make our projects eligible would be based on uh, making sure that we do not exceed the median household income for the area. Uh, the state has established that at $56,982. Um, in some cases, we're exceeding that. And in a few cases, we're under that. Uh, in any event, doesn't matter since all of our projects satisfy the less than three acres per parkland criteria. And then finally, I offer you the last three bullet points. Those are the ranking uh, tools that the state has developed. So the purpose of the grant would be to either create a new park, expand uh, an existing park, in other words, create more green space where we can, or renovate an existing park. And that would include renovating any of the facilities that are contained within a park. So our projects, again, uh, have uh, either a combination of these or strictly one of these, uh, but our projects do meet uh, these particular goals as well. All right, next slide. So in summary, these are all of our seven projects. Uh, Sharp Community Center, if you're not familiar with that, we did acquire space from the county and we're looking at an opportunity to convert that to community center space. Uh, Pocket Park, we're calling it, that would be a small parcel located at the intersection of Hellman and Fremont. Um, right now, there's an existing city-owned building. The idea would be to convert that into small uh, Pocket Park space. Burke Heritage Park, that's an existing park. It would just be a matter of adding recreational features. Story Park, here in particular, we're talking about uh, converting an uh, vacant pool area into green space and uh, to have it complement to the Jostom Center. We'll talk more about that. Uh, Gateway Plaza Park, as you know, that is located along Fremont. It does um, have the city's archway uh, emblem and uh, lots of landscaping there, but the idea there would be to create some green space for that and add some additional features. And then finally, we come to Alhambra and Granada Park pools. The idea for both of them would be to renovate the existing locker room, changing areas, reception spaces, so that it creates a better welcoming space and safer and up to more current standards um, than uh, what we have. So, uh, and then as a final piece, this is an eighth bullet. Uh, Mike uh, has additional funding resources, that is entitlement funding resources that have been made available to him through Measure A, I believe. He wants to talk to you a little bit about the intent behind uh, that funding source and uh, the kinds of projects he'll pursue there. So that's a quick, at a glance of our uh, seven projects plus the additional park facilities. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our first project. Mike, can you take it away?
Can you hear me? Okay. The, uh, the first location we have is the Shorb Clinic. And Shorb Clinic is located on the corner of 6th Street and Shorb Street. Um, the building was actually established in 1930, and the building was primarily used as a medical clinic. Um, the unique thing about this location is it is just south of Moore Field. And Moore Field is uh, an athletic facility that uh, houses um, Alhambra High School um, baseball and football and other um, amenities. Um, several years ago, we joined in to a joint use agreement with the Alhambra Unified School District so that we could uh, share the space when school was not in session. Um, let's go to slide B. Okay, we're there. Um, so it was acquired in 2019 from Los Angeles County and currently we're in a feasibility study to uh, determine the possible uses. Um, if, if it is um, determined that a uh, community center would be valuable there, um, we anticipate the project including classrooms, meeting space, kitchen, cafe, and other specialized uh, room areas. Um, in addition, we would do outdoor improvements, um, creating more green space and um, integrating a good parking plan. Um, let's go to uh, slide C, please. All right, th that's an overhead view of the, uh, the property site. And um, the land footprint is 1.38 acres. And um, it sits right in the center of the city. Um, the current building footprint is 14,000 square feet. So Frank, if you can kind of give us a little idea of that. Basically, the buildings are the two L shapes. The current parking footprint is 13,900 square feet. And then the current open space is 28,000 square feet. So as you can see, it's a pretty large uh, property. And um, once we get an idea of uh, the study and uh, the input, um, based on community uh, outreach, um, we'll uh, develop a plan and we'll go on to the next step. And that concludes my um, yeah, questions and input. Yes, yeah, so at this time, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat room or you can raise your hand with the button below. Uh, does anyone have any questions or input for the Shore Clinic project? Eric, go ahead. Hi, yeah, I was wondering if the feasibility study was shown to be approved or viable for the city, what would be the timeline on completion of that? Yes, Eric, um, we're currently in the feasibility study and we should have results shortly. Okay, does anyone else have any questions, input, things they would like to see? Go ahead, Eric. So I guess my question is once the fe feasibility study is completed, how long, how long would we be waiting for a decision on whether our grant was approved and what would be the timeline if it was approved to, to convert that facility? Okay, Eric, these are two separate things. Um, currently we're doing a feasibility study just to determine what the community feels should be on that site. The secondary portion would be us writing a particular grant for um, the development of that property. Which would be consistent with this particular application. Um, ideally, we probably would not hear from the, from the state until early, uh, the first part of the latter part of spring into the first part of the summer. And then um, I believe based on the guidelines, we have until 2025 to spend down the funding. Okay, then next up we have Teresa. Go ahead. 
Yes. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, yes, my question would be, is it already set to just be a community center or can it be, for example, a center for performing arts? I'll take that, Teresa. Um, currently, um, that's the purpose of the feasibility study to determine what the needs are within the community. And once the needs are established, a report will then be established and we will then take it to the city council and uh, they would then make um, decisions on the uh, location. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so if we don't have any other questions, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next project. All right, we're at Pocket Park now. We're at Pocket Park now. Uh, who's going to be taking that? I think that's Lucy. You there? Her screen, her screen looks frozen. So I don't okay. know if you want to take that mic. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take it. Um, the Pocket Park is located at the corner of Hellman and Fremont. And it's right across the street from uh, the Fremont School. Um, currently, it's a vacant city-owned building with approximately 2,000 square feet. Um, it was, uh, it was uh, most recently purposed as a library annex. Can we go back to the bullets? Thanks. Um, so basically, we're looking at um, the possibility of just turf, trees, landscape, and some seating. And because it's so um, close to the uh, the road, we would um, include some safety enhancements uh, such as um, uh, a low fence um, to keep, uh, keep the location safe. And it would primarily serve um, residents that could walk to that particular green space or possibly a waiting space, um, waiting for the youngsters to get out of school and pick up their children. Well, thank you, Mike, for picking up the wall. <laughs> my my uh, my connection got lost for a second, but I do want to add. Um, we do talk about uh, the pocket park as a pocket park for a purpose. It is intended to be small in nature, very passive. Um, so, as far as the recreational enhancements that are being proposed, it would be um, really uh, specific to landscape turf uh some seating areas some um some walking uh areas uh really just as an opportunity for the neighborhood residents to uh have a small destination and we've taken up i don't know if you can tell from the rendering on the right but we have taken up also that parking space that currently exists uh, that would give us a little bit of additional space, of course, for that uh, park space that we're envisioning. And um, it would be a, a nice uh, visual aesthetic, I think, for that neighborhood area. So um, in reality, um, it's, um, like I said, very passive in nature and just uh, with those safety features to add, um, to make sure that we don't have anything interfering with the uh, busy intersection. So I believe that concludes the comments on this particular um, parcel. Here's an overview of it. You will do see it on the um, lower left-hand side. Uh, thank you, Frank. And uh, again, to the left is that area we would be taking up to further develop it for parks purposes. And we would have enough landscaping there to certainly maintain the privacy of the residents that will abut the, the park parcel area. All right, we'd like to open that for comments at this point. Thank you. 
So at this time, if you have any comments or input of what you would like to see at the park, uh, please do so now. We'll go ahead and raise your hand. I do have a couple of questions in the group chat uh, from Eric. Will the meeting be available, be recorded and the slides available for people who can't make this call? Uh, the answer to that is yes. In fact, uh, this is the second of five meetings. The first meeting uh, was conducted on October 8th. That uh, uh, PowerPoint and uh, recorded meeting is on the city's website. And if you go to the city's website and, ha and navigate Alhambra Parks Grant, it should take you right to uh, these recordings or any information regarding the subsequent meetings that we're having. Okay, the next uh, from the group chat. Um, the Shorb Clinic is a great site. I would love to see an emphasis on health, food, and since it could facilitate cooking classes, growing space, and close to the, uh, re the restaurant corridor on Valley. And the next question is from Vanessa. Are all these projects contingent on grant approval? Yes, uh, we have not secured any funding sources uh, other than uh, obviously there's an opportunity in front of us and we seek to take advantage of it to, to be able to improve these areas. So it's all grant funded, yes. Okay, I have uh, Teresa who raised her hand and I have one more question from the group chat. So let's go with Teresa first. Thank you. Quick question. I agree with more, you know, green space in Alhambra. I know we need more parks. The question I have uh, is, uh, is the building okay still? Is it still meet like, you know, earthquake measures? For example, as an ex teacher, retired teacher, I would like to see it as an after school uh, homework center, shall we say, where the kids can come and help and get help to do their homework, something like that. In other words, do we have to destroy the building? Are we referencing the, uh, the pocket park? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I would imagine that, um, that the building would have to come down, but we would have to take a real good look at it to see what could be salvaged. Um, if, in fact, we were to purpose it as something like that. Um, Lucy, you got any more uh, input on that? Uh, I really don't. I mean, I think uh, there are some challenges with the space just because it's small in nature. And of course, as I mentioned, very limited parking. Um, and uh, the concept of a, of a green space meant that we could take advantage and remove the parking and, and utilize it for other purposes. But uh, certainly it's an idea that, that we can include on our list. Well, I guess I'm talking because I've been here like over 30 some years and I do remember we used to use it as a library and mm -hmm. we even had meetings there. And it's very, it's, I was just thinking it's a historical, just, it's just a thought. That's all, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Now we have one more question uh, from Eric. Will the feasibility study include projections on the financial impact on the surrounding real estate values? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that. I believe uh, those, um, those uh, ideas will be part of the report. Okay, so if we don't have any other questions or comments, in regards to Pocket Park, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next section. Okay, Burke Heritage Park. Um, Burke Heritage Park and Zaria Escape Garden, um, um, and it's adjacent to the Alhambra Historical Society Museum, sits at 1550 Alhambra Road in the northern part of Alhambra. Um, so it's, it's basically located in the northwest area of the city and it's uh, between Atlantic and Fremont. So um, it's a little small park um, that uh, is primarily passive space. Let's 
go to slide B, please. So as I said, <clears throat> the Historical Society building sits on the site and uh, it's, it serves as an area of um, historic uh, Alhambra documents and images. Um, also on the site is a Xeriscape garden that you could walk through and just relax and sit. Um, there's turf and trees, but really there's no um, recreational features. There's no restroom. <clears throat> so primarily the, uh, the, the space is used um, for um, picnics, sitting around, yoga. Um, uh, it's, it's a great little open space. Um, and it truly benefits the, the uh, residents that are of walking distance. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Here's an overhead view, and the site sits on one acre of land. And uh, it's currently, as I said before, passive park for reading, yoga, families to get together for informal activities. Um, and as you can see from the overhead view, there's there's many opportunities for additional amenities. Um, you know, we, the thought was, you know, possibly add a restroom, a couple park benches, maybe a picnic table, things like that. Um, water fountains for people to drink water um, as they, as they uh, sit and kind of relax in the park. So that's what we have with Burke Heritage Park. Okay, so at this time we're going to go ahead to any input, uh, things you would like to see around Burke Heritage Park or any questions you may have. However, we do have one question that popped up late in the chat, so I want to go ahead and address that. Uh, this is, I believe, in regards to Shore Clinic. When will the feasibility report be available to the public? Well, I'll take that. Um, currently, the uh, consultant is working on that study. And uh, as soon as we receive the uh, data, we will then submit a report to the city council. All right, and we have a question from Aiko. Go ahead and speak, please. Hi, uh, yeah, this is Aiko. Um, yeah, I understand it's um, on a historical, next to the historical building right there. Um, and, I understand Alhambra used to have um, a large citrus orchard or used to be, um, that was part of our history. And I would like to see kind of like a part of that narrative on that park, um, maybe like a citrus orchard or something as part of the, um, to show the history of Alhambra, um, just like Arlington Park, Arlington Park in Pasadena. They have a huge orchard there and they use it as part of their education and use it as like a fundraising um, piece uh, to raise funds for the park. So it'd be nice to see something like that in Alhambra. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have any feedback for Burke Heritage Park? Please raise your hand or chat type in the chat room. Okay, so no further questions or input on that. We're gonna go ahead and move to the next slide. Story Park. Okay, Story Park. Story Park is um, located at 210 North Chapel Avenue, and it's located on the northeasterly portion of the city. Um, it's a very unique park. Um, it has two sections, um, the northern section, which is more of a traditional park, um, but it's unique because of the, the way it's configured. Um, it's kind of a subterranean uh, park that has a playground, ball field, restrooms, um, uh, volleyball courts, um, and things like that. The portion of the park we're looking at redeveloping um, would be the southern portion, which um, is located um, right next to the Jocelyn Center and tennis court. Um, currently there's a vacant pool that, um, that has been vacant for many years. Um, the Story Park pool opened in the 1930s and um, it has been vacant for over 25 years. Um, there's an overhead view right there. 
uh, let's see, the rendering. Um, let's go back to the bullets, please. Okay, um, so currently there's a vacant aquatics facility. Um, the project involves the demolition of the pool, the conversion of the old amenity in a, into a usable green space, including trees, turf, walkways, landscape, picnic areas, lighting. Um, it would also include um, renovation of the um, entryway into the um, Jocelyn Center, Senior Center. Um, now we can go to the next slide, please. Okay, there's the overhead view. And um, with funding, um, uh, we may be able to repurpose the space for seniors and families. Amenities um, include uh, a walking circuit, uh, lighting, multi-purpose area, drinking fountain. Um, as you can see, oh, there you, thank you. As you can see, there's a walking path, uh, grass area, LED lighting. It's just, just basically an upgraded um, open space for seniors and families. And of course, note the, the, uh, the expanded um, location for senior ride to drop off the seniors at the center and enhancement to the entrance of the building. Thank you. Let's move on to the next slide. All right, at this time, if anyone has any input or questions into the improvements that we are looking for at Story Park, please raise your hand or type in the chat box. Okay, I don't believe we have any hands up or questions or comment. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide. Gateway Plaza Park. Uh, thank you, Frank. And thank you, Mike, for sharing um, details on Story Park. At this point, we'll talk about Gateway Plaza Park. Uh, this particular project, uh, it is an existing park area located along Fremont. As you can see there, um, the city's uh, Moore Archway emblem is located at the park site. Um, it is meant to be a quiet destination area for people to just walk through and enjoy. Um, but we have found that it has, um, from our perspective, maybe a lot of folks can't readily use it because there isn't necessarily a lot of green, uh, green space for people to just sit down and maybe enjoy their lunch. There also isn't a lot of seating areas. And so therefore the bench on the image in front of you. So part of this project would definitely involve removing some of that existing landscape and replacing it with turf and also replacing it with um, additional seating area, maybe some uh, shade features or things of that nature to to create greater greater usability, and it is located as a at a busy uh, intersection as well. So there could be room for some um, additional um, safety. Uh, I know we have some landscape barriers, but uh, we uh, I believe that may have come up before as a, as a comment. Um, so those are things that can be evaluated as part of this project. Uh, again, just with the intent to create more usability for, for the uh, area, area residents. And uh, have no other, other comments to share on that except to gather some input and get some questions. Thank you. All right, so we have Aiko, go ahead. Hi. Um, yeah, the park looks is looks like a very lovely park. Um, the only reason why I don't use that park is because it seems very exposed to the sun. Um, and I would like to see more trees. Um, a, a lot more trees, actually, just to um, compensate for the high traffic and the pollution that's created by the cars and um, and also um, a resting space. Because um, uh, I, I 
I feel like those benches are nice, but um, they look very exposed to the sun. That's it. All right, thank you. Does anyone else have any input, questions, regards to Gateway Plaza Park? All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on. We now have Alhambra Park Pool. All right, let me... All right, can you hear me? Invisible? Technical difficulties got wiped away. All right. Um, again, I'm Bree. I'm the deputy director uh, oversee aquatics as part of my job duties and a little back history on Alhambra Park's pool here. Alhambra Park pool opened July 4th in 1921, making this facility about nine months shy of 100 years old. So even though during that 100 years, uh, small renovations have taken place, the structure itself remains basically untouched. So staff do take major pride. My aquatic staff spend a lot of time um, and effort in keeping it in working order, um, making repairs, keeping things going. So it does look, you know, like there's a lot of care into it. However, it sees a lot of foot traffic. Uh, during the three months heavy season of aquatics, which is June, July, and August, that facility will go through about 2,000 swimmers just in swim lessons alone over that three month period. And they see about 5,000 in rec swimmers. So it gets a lot of foot traffic through our locker rooms. And that's more what we're talking about here today. The pool itself is fine. It's the locker rooms that need renovation. So in the video, you'll see the state. The biggest issue with Alhambra Park Pool is both locker rooms are exposed to the elements. They are open air locker rooms, so they have coverage, but they are exposed for heat, rain, wind, everything, and the exposure damage to these locker rooms takes a heavy toll on them. What we'd like is, these locker rooms, you'll see they've got changing areas. They're limited. There's two restrooms in the girls' restrooms, one in the urinal in the boys, limited benching. You'll see brick damage. You'll see wood rot to the easements. Um, it just, they are in desperate need of renovation. We'd like to make sure that we can upgrade them to withstand the heavy foot traffic and usability that they see every summer. Mind you, these are open year round. We've got swim lessons. We've got um, some team that uses them year round. So they're heavily used year round. And the biggest thing is just the weather damage, as you can see here at Allen Park Pool. So we'd like to be able to submit this as one of our projects and be able to upgrade it with some new amenities. Um, so as you see through those pictures, if there's any questions regarding the state of our locker rooms here at Alhambra Park Pool. All right, we're gonna go ahead to send input or questions of improvements you would like to see at Alhambra Park Pool. Please raise your hand or type into the chat box. We have a question for or comment input from Eric. Go ahead. Hello, Eric. Eric, go ahead. Hi, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, I was wondering if any renovations to the pool itself are going to be included in the, the proposal or the grant request. To the actual pool? Yes. The pool itself was recently uh, at Alhambra Park uh, replastered and renovated, uh, I believe about four years ago, three to, three to four years ago in 2016. 
So the answer would be that no further renovations are going to be done. At this time, no, we're just proposing the the locker room renovation in this grant process. Okay, thank you. Okay, does anyone else have any questions or input of things they would like to see improved at Alhambra Park Pool? Okay, I don't see any. Uh, Eric, go ahead. Eric, I see your hand up. Uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. And if you have any further questions or comments, please go ahead. Hey, sorry, getting a little used to Zoom. Um, so how far are we on finishing the, the um, feasibility study for for um, this Alhambra Park pool or Alhambra Pool Park? There is no feasibility study for Alhambra Pool. This is just a proposal for uh, grant funding through Props, Proposition 68. So these are, we're getting community input right now on these projects as we submit them um, for a possible funding through this grant. I don't have any other hands up or questions. Um, Eric, if you're having difficulty uh, with the microphone, you could always chat, uh, type things into the chat box as well. Uh, but I think we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next uh, project. Please hold. And we have Granada Park Pool. Go ahead, Bree. Again, Granada Park Pool is in just as bad of a shape as a Humber Park pool. It is not an outdoor space. Um, however, Granada pool is in much of the same being run down in need of the locker rooms being renovated. Again, we're just talking about the locker rooms. Granada pool was built in 1950, but fully renovated in 1997, but it still makes the locker rooms about 23 years old. So, with this renovation at both facilities, we're looking into maybe some environmental components that will be incorporated with water-wise toilets, shower timers to assist with conservation efforts. So again, in, as you see in these pictures, um, just the overall upkeep, they've tried the best they can, but broken tiles, old lockers themselves that are outdated, um, flooring, uh, partitions that are there but not as up to standards as we would like them. All of this is ADA compliant as it is but still they just need a facelift to have a little bit more foot traffic usability. The numbers at Granada we have we service about a hundred um, sorry 1500 lessons during that three month period and about 3000 swimmers at this pool. So this pool still is heavily used year around but during the peak three months it those are about the numbers that we see coming through the foot traffic here. So uh, luckily Granada Pool is an indoor facility locker room, so it doesn't have the wear and tear from the outside. However, with all locker rooms being indoors, you now have humidity as a factor with all the showers and the water and things like that, and humidity does wear and tear rather quickly on facilities. So. Granada Pool is definitely not as old as Alhambra Pool, but it's still desperately in need in renovations of our locker room facilities. Any questions? All right, so does anyone have any questions or feedback of things they would like to see if we were to do some park improvements in the restroom locker room areas? Please raise your hand or type in the chat box. Okay, I don't have any hands up. So we will go ahead and move on to the next. And that is Mike. Uh, Mike's gonna talk to us a little bit about Alhambra Park facilities upgrades. Thank you, Frank. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about right now is um, our Measure A allocation funds. Um, 
we really would like to um, do some improvements at Alhambra Park and uh, I'll be talking about Almanza Park shortly. Alhambra Park is located at 500 North Palm Avenue and it's on the westerly side of town. It uh, has 14.22 um, acres of land. Um, it's our oldest park in our, in our uh, parkland. It was uh, first developed in the city um, in 1921. And uh, with it being so um, old, it's very unique in terms of um, it's being, it being different to all the other parks uh, throughout the city. Um, this particular park um, has amenities such as a pool and tennis courts and um, playground. And it's primarily used as a, a picnic park. Um, with its uh, picnic shelters and um, pre-COVID, um, it was one of our most active family picnic parks in the city. Um, when we talk about Almanzer Park in a couple minutes, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll see how it's far different than Alhambra Park in terms of its usage. Um, with the Measure A funds, uh, we were planning on um, restoring the lower restrooms, um, by uh, totally rehabbing the exterior to, um, to turn it back to its original state. So basically tearing it down to its studs and uh, then um, redoing the interior with waterless urinals, uh, stainless steel toilets, um, stainless steel partitions, and new flooring. Um, uh, the restrooms there have been in dire need for many years, and this would be an opportunity to rehab them and uh, get them back to a state that um, would make uh, the residents of Alhambra proud again. Um, then as part of the project, we would also like to um, do some enhancements to the tennis courts by adding um, LED lighting, resurfacing the courts, and replacing some of the fencing that that is rotting at the foundation. Um, and then the third portion of the park that we'd like to include with the allocation would be to um, improve one of the playground um, amenities. Um, just recently, we, we did a, an improvement with Kaboom, Kaboom um, Playgrounds and uh, collaborated with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And uh, with that, we replaced one of the playground features, but we did not uh, tackle the other amenity, uh, playground amenities at the park. So we would like to finish that playground before we Mike, I believe your camera is frozen. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, Almanzer Park. Um, Almanzer Park is located on the easterly side of uh, Alhambra. It's located at 800 South Almanzer Street and it's 28.38 acres of land. It's a very large parcel. Um, the park opened around 1951 and um, it is unique in itself. Um, they're all, all our parks are a little bit different, but Almanzer Park is more of what we would consider a, a sports park. And um, that's where the little leagues play and AYSO soccer. Um, we have three ball fields. We have four open, um, open space turf areas um, for soccer fields. We do, um, we have tennis there, um, a gymnasium. Placing the windows in the um, original 1951 um, gymnasium. Um, currently, uh, the windows there have been in place since 1951. Uh, we'd love to restore the bleachers to original. Over the years, they've been painted over and over, and they just need a, a total redo. 
um, and then restore the original paint and rehab the, the, the women's and men's restrooms. So basically what we want to do is we want to uh, bring back the old building, which is El Manzer Gym, and restore it to its original state. Um, and, uh, and that uh, concludes my presentation. All right, so we're gonna turn it back to you, Lucy, with any uh, final questions, what are next steps, et cetera? Sure, so we do have another meeting uh, coming up uh, to solicit more community feedback. As I mentioned, um, we are expected to fulfill at least five public meetings. Uh, this is the second of the five. And so the next meeting will occur on uh, Tuesday, October 20th at 2 p.m. We are targeting many of the uh, youth in the community. Um, and we hope that that will be an ideal time for them to participate. And of course, uh, for the audience members, if you have friends, and neighbors that are interested in these projects, please ask them to either participate in the meeting or at a minimum to complete our survey, which as I mentioned is online via the city's website through that parks grant uh, link uh, for the city of Alhambra. And um, based on that survey, what we will do is actually compile um, all of the feedback received during the, the community meetings, as well as the survey, will go to the Recreation Commission planned for Thursday, November 5th at 7 p.m. And at that meeting, we'll summarize the input and also give some recommendations as far as these projects are concerned uh, with the intent to uh, later bring that back to council as our final meeting and our final step, if you will. Uh, that council meeting is planned for that second meeting of the council in November. And the challenge to that is uh, simply that I'm um, not sure if it's tentative because I'm not sure if the holiday schedule will interfere with that. But either way, we will be agendizing something before the city council and before the December 14th date. So be on the lookout for that. At this point, before we conclude, as I know we've thrown a lot of information out you and you probably have uh, wanted a minute or two to digest some of it, uh, can we open it, Frank, to any additional questions or comments on any of the projects, including the uh, additional projects that Mike mentioned under uh, Prop or Measure A um, that he wants to utilize for improving the gym and uh, Alhambra Park? But overall, if there are any other comments, this would be a good time. Yes, I do have a few more comments. Uh, I apologize, the last slide is not up to date, but we will fix that on future meetings. Um, first we have, uh, let's see, John has a question. I have a question about the new pocket park at Hellman and Fremont. John, do you go ahead and unmute yourself and Ask yeah, I can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, I joined the meeting late, my apologies, and uh, I was hoping to get uh, just a, uh, a description and the location of the new planned pocket park. It sounds uh, like an interesting idea. Oh, absolutely. It's located at the intersection of Helmon and Fremont. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, thank you for joining us. But as I mentioned earlier, it does involve converting uh, that city owned building into green space. And it would be a passive recreational activity, uh, some walking paths and uh, seating areas, uh, turf, trees, landscape, and uh, no parking as it is a pocket park. Pocket parks are neighborhood parks. They're really just there to complement the uh, immediate area residents. That sounds like a fantastic idea. I know that building has, in, has been in disuse for some time and uh, th th that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. Our pleasure, thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, the next thing we have from Vanessa, a uh, comment, consider adding hydration stations at these parks to make water accessible to all, specifically to allow residents to refill reusable water bottles. Thank you, Vanessa. 
Thank you, Vanessa. And I have one more from a question from Jose F. When is the last day to turn in the surveys? Will the survey information be publicized to hear what the Alhambra residents want? Yes, uh, we will be uh, going through the survey through all of October and then it, to prepare for the uh, Recreation Commission meeting as well as the council, we will have to conclude at that point, uh, gather the information and then summarize it for, for both the commission and the council. So there, there will have to be a cutoff point uh, again at the end of this month to, to enable all of that. Um, and incidentally, uh, this did come up at our previous community meeting. Is the survey available in multiple languages? The answer to that is yes. It is available in Spanish um, and uh, Mandarin, I believe. Ben you might be able to correct me, but um, it is available for the community to participate. Yes, it's in Mandarin. Thank you. And um, Aiko agreed with Vanessa in regards to the comment of water, reusable water filling stations. And Jose, Jose says, thank you. Uh, do we have any additional comments or questions? Input, feedback? Okay, I believe that is all we have, Lucy. Well, thank you again, everyone, for participating. Please share this information and encourage your uh, neighbors and friends to join us again on October 20th. That's Tuesday of next week at 2 p.m. And you'll find the link on the City Parks Grant uh, page. Thank you again. Have a great weekend and a great Saturday. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.